Dear President Obama, a video memo about climate change. Dear Mr. President, congratulations on your re-election. In your Wednesday, November 14, 2012 press conference, you were asked two questions by Mark Landler of the New York Times about anthropogenic global warming or man-made climate change, whatever you'd like to call it. Let's discuss the first question and your reply. He asked, in part, um, Tomorrow you're going up to, uh, to New York City where you're going to, I assume, see people who are still suffering the effects of Hurricane Sandy, which many people say is further evidence of, uh, of how a, a, a warming globe is changing our weather. Um, what specifically do you plan to do in a second term to tackle the issue of climate change? The first sentence of your reply was, you know, As you know, Mark, we can't attribute any particular weather event to climate change? Bravo for that, President Obama. Most persons don't believe claims by mainstream media that a weather event is caused by global warming driven by anthropogenic greenhouse gases. In fact, Sandy is a prime example of where the data contradicts the assumptions made by the press. This is a map of Sandy's storm track. The box I've added shows the coordinates used in the following graph of sea surface temperature anomalies. I've started the graph in 1938, which is the year of the Great New England Hurricane, also known as the Yankee Clipper, Long Island Express, or the Great Hurricane. And the data set is the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration's extended sea surface temperature reconstruction version 3b. Let's have Excel add a linear trend. As we can see, based on the linear trend, the sea surface temperatures for Sandy's path have not warmed in 70 plus years. When the storm continued north out of the tropics and became a baroclinic hurricane, there was an escalation of the nonsensical claims. Things like a new normal, dirty weather. If we look at the sea surface temperatures for that extra tropical portion, we can see that they've actually cooled over the past 70 plus years. They haven't cooled a lot, but they have definitely not warmed. Here, let me remove the linear trend and add a line that represents the October 2012 value. Now we can see that there was nothing unusual about the October 2012 sea surface temperature anomalies. It was warm, no doubt about that, but it had been surpassed dozens of times over the past 70 plus years. That data and the rest of the data presented in this video memo are available to the public through the Royal Netherlands Meteorological Institute website called the KNMI Climate Explorer, just in case you'd like to have one of your staff verify my results. With all due respect, Mr. President, the next sentence in your reply is incorrect. You said, What we do know is the temperature around the globe is increasing faster than was predicted even 10 years ago. The climate models used by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, are stored in an archive called the Coupled Model Intercomparison Project, also known as CMIP. For the most recent of the IPCC reports, its fourth assessment report, they use the climate models in the CMIP-3 archive. This graph shows the average of the projections of global surface temperatures from the dozens of individual simulations that were prepared by all of the climate modeling groups around the world for the IPCC report and that were stored in the CMIP-3 archive. The projected rise in global surface temperatures for the past 10 years, which was your reference period, not mine, well, it was just shy of two-tenths of a degree Celsius. Global surface temperatures, on the other hand, have cooled over that period, Mr. President. This is plainly visible in the Goddard Institute for Space Studies Land-Ocean Temperature Index and the UK Met Office's 
had crude 4 data and in the National Climatic Data Center's product. Moving on, I found your next sentence quite interesting, Mr. President, here. We do know that the Arctic uh, ice cap is melting faster than was predicted even five years ago. Let's discuss how many persons hear what you've just said, Mr. President. You've stated quite well one of the inadequacies of the climate models. They have no value as short-term climate forecasting tools. If they can't simulate the decline in Arctic sea ice over a five-year term, or, as from our previous example, or they can't simulate global temperatures over a 10-year term, what value do they have over a term of 100 years? None. They have shown no skill whatsoever at being able to simulate global temperatures in the short and long terms. Climate models are tuned to recreate the global surface temperatures of the 20th century. The tuning methods were discussed in a recent peer-reviewed paper. Also, the IPCC has acknowledged that there were two warming periods during the 20th century and two periods when global temperatures cooled or remained relatively flat. If you're not aware, the only time the model hindcats came close to matching the rate at which global surface temperatures warmed was during the latter warming period the period from the mid-1970s to present. Again, in this series of graphs, we're using the average of the simulations from the climate models stored in the CMIP-3 archive. We're also presenting the latest and greatest global surface temperature data set. It was released this year from the UK Med Office. Let's look at the other periods of the 20th century. The climate models could not simulate the cooling that occurred from the 1940s to the mid-1970s. And they could not simulate the cooling from 1900 through the 1910s. The most telling, though, is the early warming period. Surface temperature warmed at a rate that was about three times faster than hindcast by the climate models. That's atrocious. Three times faster. They missed it by a bunch. And since the rates at which global surface temperatures warmed during the early and late warming periods were about the same, it shows how flawed the climate models are. According to the models, global surface temperatures during the later warming period should have warmed at a rate that was much, much faster than during the early period. But they warmed at about the same rate. Basically, the modelers have no clue why global surface temperatures warm. In other words, the hypothesis of man-made greenhouse gas-driven global warming is flawed. If the modelers do not know why global surface temperatures warmed during the early warming period, they can't claim to understand why it warmed during the latter period and they definitely can't project the flawed argument out into the future. It's preposterous that they do. The IPCC presents model outputs and data in ways that hide the flaws in their models. Without the models, the hypothesis of anthropogenic global warming falls apart. You may not be aware of something, Mr. President. NOAA's satellite-era sea surface temperature data, which covers the past 30 years, shows the warming occurred naturally. That data set from NOAA is the best. One simply needs to break the data down into logical subsets, and the data itself shows very clearly why it has warmed. Further, there's NOAA's ocean heat content data and it's available from the National Oceanographic Data Center. It reflects, for the most part, the temperatures of the global oceans to depths of about 2,300 feet. It can also be broken down into logical subsets to show that it warmed naturally. 
The explanations of this are a little bit too detailed to expand on here and now. I have, however, prepared two YouTube videos called The Natural Warming of the Global Oceans. They provide a pretty detailed overview of the processes that cause sea surface temperatures and ocean heat content to warm. Part 1 runs about 55 minutes and Part 2 about 40 minutes. They were prepared for non-technical people, or at least I tried to make them as non-technical as possible. Part 1 appeared in the 24-hour WUWT-TV webcast put on by Anthony Watts. Anthony is the editor of the most visited website on global warming and climate change. The blog called What's Up With That? I've also explained the processes through which the oceans warm in minute detail in my ebook, Who Turned On the Heat? The Unsuspected Global Warming Culprit, El Nino Southern Oscillation. It was introduced in my blog post, Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About El Nino and La Nina. I also published an ebook about the failings of the IPCC's climate models. It's called, If the IPCC was selling man-made global warming as a product, would the FTC stop their deceptive ads? Yes, I know, it's a terrible title. But the content is very informative, as is the content of my recent book, Who Turned on the Heat? As presented by climate modelers and climate scientists involved in the IPCC, climate science has become nothing more than a flawed attempt to support a political endeavor. The sea surface temperature and ocean heat content data contradict the hypothesis. Now I'm not a political person, Mr. President. No disrespect intended, I personally find politics to be very, very boring. My complaint is that politics have invaded science, especially climate science. And since climate science is so politicized, it cannot be relied on for objectivity or for answers. Answers the people of this lovely country deserve. Thank you for your time. Respectfully yours, Bob Tisdale, Independent Researcher.